In this Axion Tips and Tricks videos, we're focusing specifically on the TerraTrack settings within the Cebus menu. For all of the other menu choices, I refer you to the other Tips and Tricks videos that cover transmission, hitch, hydraulic, CSM, steering, and all of the other menu choices that still apply to the Axion 930 and 960 TT. But for this version specifically, I want to focus our attention in the transmission setting menu. And in the sub menu, all the way down at the bottom, you'll find TerraTrack, touch it, and that'll bring open the TerraTrack menu itself. In here, we have two items of concern. One is the level setting, which maintains the vertical position of the rear axle in relationship to the ground. And the other is the steering assistance or the brake assisted turns at the uh, end rows or headlands. So let's take these one at a time. The level settings, if you touch in there, you'll find that there are three choices. One is manual, which is checked now. The other is medium and high, and those are automatic settings that electronically monitor the position of the rear axle while you are at work. So it automatically takes care of things. Typically, we would run mostly in the medium automatic settings. But if we go back to the manual settings, you will notice that another menu pops up, and that is the manual setting of levelness. And that you can force between 90% for maximum height or 10% for minimum height of the rear axle. As you force this manually and you hit the check mark, you will notice that after a few seconds, the rear axle and the TerraTrack system through the suspension uh, cylinders will start to move up and down and it will change the position of the drawbar to make it easier to hook up because it does move the drawbar in a vertical distance approximately 14 inches. You can also use it if you need to force a higher ground clearance to work over bedded crops and you can also use it for finding or pulling level on the drawbar. Some all implements pretty much need to pull at a level attitude forward to rearward. And by having the ability to adjust the track height, we can maintain that levelness for maximum pull in the most efficient and productive settings. If we go under the steering assistance, you'll notice there's an on and an off button. When it's grayed out like this, the system is off. When it's highlighted in green like this, the system is on. Within the steering assistance, you have two choices of settings. One is based on ground speed, and this adjusts the speed at which the brake assisting kicks in or kicks out. So if you only want the brake assisted steering at lower speed, say below six miles per hour, you would set it at six and leave it there. But if you want brake assisted turning at higher speeds up to 12 miles an hour, then you would simply move the setting as that hit the check mark, and now the brake assisted turning will be available and automatically kick in anytime your speed is under 12 miles per hour. The other setting is the aggressiveness, and the aggressiveness is set between one and five, five being the maximum aggressivity of the brake assisted turning, so the brakes come on sooner and harder in the turn, or you can set it down towards one or anywhere in between for the minimum setting. This will help improve your turning and reduce the snow plowing effect of the front tires, especially if you have a very heavy rear three point hitch load where a lot of your weight is transferring off of the rear axle. This will help improve your turning and make a more precise handling. 